Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News, and we've got a video here with Matt James and why he's so disappointed in the Bachelor franchise, which seems to be a running topic these days. He said, in my conversion from person to prop, key pieces of me were left behind. I'm going to get into that story right away. We've got so much to cover today. Follow me on Instagram at dneals. I'll be going live on Patreon right after this, 10 a.m. Pacific time, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I will be telling the story about what a dog psychic said to me yesterday from my dog, and it actually kind of blew my mind. I'm pretty skeptical still, but she uh, she pretty much nailed it. So uh, dogs, and by the way, my fiance, my poor fiance was so upset that the dog wanted to talk to me and not her. Uh, <laughs> no, but she took it in good stride. All right, we're going to get into this story, but also don't forget I got other content out there. Definitely. I've got this video right here I just dropped on the Dave Neal Show. It's uh, me discussing uh, some more follow from the Amber Heard Johnny Depp case. And also, I've got information on the new lawsuit from Brad Pitt suing his ex, Angelina Jolie. If you like a little bit of the celebrity world and want a little bit of an escape from Bachelor, go to the Dave Neal Show. I think we might hit 25,000 subscribers today, which is just wild. It's just wild. All right. So aside from that, uh, if anyone wants to know a little bit more about the behind the scene workings of my life and entertainment, here's from a film shoot last night. Everyone's wondering why I look like a, a super trooper extra, but I was on, had a very small role in a movie last night. And you can go see that on the Dave, on Dave Neal's community, which is a free uh, community on Facebook. If you want to join that crowd as about like 1700 of us over there, just go to just type in Dave Neal's. Oh yeah. 1700 Dave Neal's community. You can post and comment. Oh, look at this. How about, oh my gosh, this is Dr. Tori, our, one of our resident uh, psychologists here, uh, bought, she bought me this shirt with just Tasha's face. And then she's got a version with my face and Tasha's face. So let's see if anyone can one up her with that. Cause that's pretty much, I'm not saying that's fan of the year, but that is in the running for fan of the year for sure. All right. As I've done in the past with Matt James, when an article's written what I hope to be well, LA times, uh, you know, they usually write a good, uh, when they write opinion pieces, they're usually uh, pretty well done when they're writ uh, writing about culture. I'm just going to read the whole piece. So do me a favor, relax, sit back, do your laundry, whatever it is you're doing, just sit back. I'm going to let the author, Greg Braxton, tell this story uh, with my narration. So here we go. Okay. The Bachelor made a sideshow of its finest black star. Now he's speaking out. There he is on top of, um, I don't know, is that called a pergola? What's that called? Right in the woods there. I'm sure a lot of algae gets, uh, you need a trisodium phosphate. You spray it on there, it removes the algae. I remember that from my painting days. Okay, so there he is. How did he get up there? Nobody knows. Decked out in a tuxedo that hugged his tall, athletic frame, Matt James looked like a movie star as he embarked on his historic journey on ABC's The Bachelor. He took a deep, anxious breath as a parade of beautiful women, all vying to be his future bride, arrived. One by one, the contestants approached the commercial real estate agent as he stood in front of the lavish resort that would be the season's headquarters. Most devoured him with their eyes. Some made a brash first impression, barely their lingerie, a football jersey with Mrs. James on the back, a vibrator. One presented him with a massive homemade meatball asking, can I put my balls in your mouth? <laughs> James was, oh boy, you know what I mean? To live in the United States of America. Okay, James was starring in what had been billed as a landmark season for The Bachelor. When nationwide protests sparked by the murder of George Floyd erupted, the hugely popular reality franchise, which had been repeatedly criticized for racism and cultural insensitivity throughout its 20-year history, moved quickly to show solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. Disney-owned ABC plucked James from a pool of contestants on the upcoming season of The Bachelorette and announced the would-be Bachelor's first black lead. What well, they're probably not going to say in this article is that he's friends with Hannah Brown, who at the same time had uh, slipped the, uh, you know, saying the N-word uh, as while singing mu uh, music lyrics, and she was, um, had just gotten some trouble there, right, you know, rightfully. Uh, this is just the beginning, and we will continue to take action with regard to diversity issues on this franchise, ABC Entertainment President Carrie Burke declared in a June 2020 statement, adding that the network had a responsibility to make sure the love stories we're seeing on screen are representative of the world we live in. But as James watched his debut with friends and family at his New York apartment, months after filming ended, he began to sense that The Bachelor had pulled back from that directive. It seemed that the significance of his presence and the milestone it marked had been buried under the series' usual hijinks, laser-focused on the high drama of finding a happily ever after. 
There was nothing to lay the framework, my background, who I was or why I'm here, James recalled in a recent interview with the Times. The show went straight into seeing these women doing crazy things. It was very frustrating to watch. As the season progressed, the feeling did not abate. He reasoned that producers had shifted gears without telling him, failing to show him as an accomplished young black man who had overcome many personal and professional challenges. He bristled as members of the massive Bachelor Nation fan base called him bland and boring on social media. Some even labeled him an Uncle Tom. There's Matt James with Chris Harrison. The late great, he's not dead, but he is in the Bachelor world. The crisis deepened. Graphic designer Rachel Kirkconnell, whom James was clearly smitten with, was swept up in a firestorm when fans discovered she had been photographed at an antebellum South-themed party in 2018 and had liked racially insensitive social media posts. Rachel Lindsay, the franchise's first black bachelorette from the show's 2017 season and an extra correspondent, was attacked with racial slurs after a contentious TV interview with host Chris Harrison in which the Bachelor mainstay seemed to dismiss the controversy around Kirk Connell. By the time James returned for the live after the final Rose special, the season had unraveled, Harrison had ex exited the franchise, and James was mentally and physically exhausted. He felt that The Bachelor had botched its opportunity to reverse its troubled history. When he left the stage hand-in-hand -hand with Kirk Connell, whom he had chosen as his mate, he vowed to repair the damage and seize back ownership of his narrative. In my, conver in my conversion from person to prop, key pieces of me were left behind, James writes in his new book, First Impressions Off-Screen Conversations with the Bachelor on Race, Family, and Forgiveness. The memoir, which he wrote with Cole Brown, author of Grey Boy, Finding Blackness in a White World, provides a fuller, more three-dimensional portrait of James as he discusses his life before The Bachelor and his experiences on the show. With a tone both conversational and revealing, First Impressions details James' upbringing by a single white mother in Raleigh, North Carolina. His brother's encounters with law enforcement and how his tumultuous relationship with his mostly absent black father impacted his ability to form lasting relationships. He spotlights his deep spirituality and his desire to share the lessons I've learned from a lifetime of ignoring unlikely odds. I felt like I started writing the book during the show because I was tapping into those places in my past in real time. I was addressing things that I had hidden in the darkest corners of my mind and my being that I've never wanted to address. James said he was having constant meaningful conversations with the women on the show about race and other serious issues, but when that didn't come across on the show, it looked like I lacked substance. I lacked depth. We had the opportunity to have those tough conversations, but the show missed the mark. I'm disappointed not only for myself... Middle America could have benefited so much. So many lives could have been enriched, not only by my conversations with Rachel, but with the other women who were on this journey. Instead, he writes in First Impressions, his identity as a mixed kid, an ambitious dreamer, and a tireless striver were sub subsumed by the controversy. ABC and Warner Brothers, which produces The Bachelor, declined to comment on this story. The misstep started on the first night. James described how he engaged in a heartfelt conversation with Chris Harrison about the burden he felt and his anxiety over the outside pressure that, that he select a black woman. I poured my heart out for more than an hour, stressing over the impossible choices before me, an openness to love in all of its many forms on one side and a duty to my people on the other. It felt impossible to please everyone. But when the discussion aired, it was only a few seconds, shedding its nuance and ultimately misrepresenting James' point of view. Fans picking up first impressions, hoping for a sizzling takedown or juicy behind-the-scenes morsels about James' season should beware, though. His account of the season and tensions between him and Kirk Connell after her antebellum picture resurfaced is a small fraction of the 256-page book. There are only a few pointed references to Harrison, and he is not even mentioned by name. I didn't want to use that story for people to engage with my book. There will be another Bachelor, and there will probably be another Black Bachelor, and there will be another tell-all book. I wasn't interested in that. If that's what interests fans and that outweighs the personal things I want to share, then my book isn't for them. That's the moment where you're in the pit, and you shout to the audience, are you not entertained, right? That's what he's saying. If you're here for the tea, if you're here for the quick slams, if you're here for those sound bites, this ain't it. This is bigger. This is higher up. This is more important. Besides, James said what happened during his season had already been heavily reported and scrutinized. There wasn't anything left to rehash. My relationship had been made into a sideshow, a complete circus. Rachel and, I, Rachel and I have moved on. We're one of the only couples from that franchise still going strong. No lie there. 
The reason is we're going at things at our own pace. We're not playing games that a lot of people play just to stay in that circle. He might have been more revealing in the book if he had felt more support from executives who had pledged to put a focus on diversity, he said. Maybe I would have told that story if the franchise had made a more concerted effort to take part in that conversation when, when it was at its height. That opportunity was lost because everyone is afraid and sitting on their hands. I understand it, but that's the kind of thing that happens when you bring people of color into your space. If they're not willing to have that conversation, they should strongly consider not going there in the first place. There are things about being black that people who aren't black can never understand. It's too much for them to handle, but it's my life. Ashley Tabron, a high school teacher in North Carolina who started watching the show in 2017 when Lindsay made history as the first black bachelorette, said that she felt the bachelor betrayed James, but that she was proud he emerged triumphant and found love. Matt James was thrust into an impossible situation that had lasting ramifications on Bachelor Nation. I completely understand his criticism of the show because he was failed in many ways. Despite this, he was able to find lasting love and use his platform to bring awareness to causes he cares about. I applaud him for getting his story out on his own terms. Despite his misgivings, James is philosophical about his Bachelor experience and has no ill will against the franchise. I took this responsibility head on. I knew what I was signing up for. It wasn't the right audience. My message was not the one that the Bachelor was trying to promote across their franchise, which is fine. That's on me being naive. Rachel and I were the ones accountable and having the conversations. The franchise is a collection of people. I'm one person. Rachel is one person. How do you hold a, a, an organization of people responsible? You don't. Following James' season, more changes came to the franchise, including a season of The Bachelorette featuring a black lead, Michelle Young, a black co-host, former Bachelorette Tisha Adams, and the series' first black executive producer, Jody Baskerville who had worked as a producer on the Bachelor franchise and other reality series. Still, the struggles with inclusion have continued, with black finalists from young season passed over as the next Bachelor for former football player Clayton Eckerd, a move that infuriated, infuriated many black fans. For his part... With his book and his new love, James has other things to think about besides The Bachelor. Asked if he would do things all over again, he had a surprising response. I'd do it tomorrow, he said. It was still an incredible experience, and so much good stuff came out of it. It was frustrating and disappointing, but there's another way to look at it. One of the main reasons I went on the show was to find someone who was compatible with me, and I did that despite the show, which is hilarious. I found what I was looking for, which shouldn't have been the case. He smiled, and he said, but I'll take it. All right, well, there's Matt James. As poetic as always, well-written story. Yeah, you know, just understanding that he's been commodified. He's become a product of a beast of a show that has intentions that no longer, that do not represent necessarily his intentions. Now, here's where the privilege comes in that people like me possess. And a large portion of our audience is probably white presenting. However, you know, you might, I'm Latin, whatever. If you're white presenting, you might have a privilege that people aren't judging you in a certain way and that you, so, so I always put it this way. If I, if I get cut off in traffic or if someone's rude to me at the gas station, I just think that they're an asshole. If someone who presents as black walks into a gas station and someone's rude to them, they have to wonder, was that person racist or is that person just an asshole? I've got what some people call a privilege that that is not a concern of mine. That is not a concern of mine that, that has led me and in, in, that has been a part of my journey moving forward. So when Matt looks at his bad edit, he doesn't have the luxury of, think, of thinking, oh, the show's just here to um, create drama. He has to wonder, did the show exploit me because of my, the color of my skin to, to increase their ratings? Did the show stoke this fire? And that's why Rachel Kirkconnell couldn't speak out for so long. And they wanted to wait or, you know, wait till after the final rose so they could increase their ratings. And even Chris Harrison's not big enough to, uh, to hold on to his job when the show's just trying to commodify um, folks for drama, you know? It makes you wonder, right? It's important to think about these things and not just take them for face value. And it's so important not to be defensive if you're on a side that doesn't understand somebody else's point of view. Defensiveness, I understand. It's just a genetic sort of like it's in our bones. It's in our survival, just fight or flight, right? But we have to, we, we live in a world in 2022 where we have to put our guards down and let others tell their story, or those stories will never be told and worse, they'll just be repeated. Let me know what you guys think. More content coming your way. 